As October rolled into the western Pennsylvania hills, a chill crept into the air in Slippy Creek, whispering of the coming of Halloween. Shadows stretched longer each day, and the wind seemed to carry voices from an unseen world. The town, usually a beacon of warmth and light, began to embrace the spookier side of things, a testament to the thinning veil between the seasons. In the heart of Slippy Creek, pumpkins appeared on doorsteps, their grinning faces flickering in the twilight. Cornstalks rustled mysteriously in the breeze, and children spoke in hushed tones about the legend of Old Man Wickersham, a ghost said to wander the hills, searching for his lost hound. The Yin's Cafe, a haven of gossip and pie, transformed under Gloria's watchful eye. Cobwebs adorned the corners, and a cauldron of steaming apple cider took pride of place. The regulars told tales of eerie happenings, lights flickering without cause, strange shapes glimpsed in the mist, and the distant howl of a dog on windless nights. At Slippy Crick School, the children's excitement was palpable. Miss Darlene, known for her love of drama, organized a haunted house in the gymnasium. The bravest ventured in, only to emerge wide-eyed and breathless, speaking of clanking chains and ghostly whispers. It was all in good fun, of course, but even the skeptics glanced over their shoulders just to be sure. Streamside General Store became a repository of Halloween essentials, candies in the shape of bats and skulls, costumes ranging from the classic ghost to the more modern zombie, and bags of apples for bobbing. His window display featured a lifelike scarecrow that seemed to watch passers-by with knowing, straw-filled eyes. But it was the old Jenkins place, just outside of town, that held the true mystery of Slippy Creek. Abandoned for years, the dilapidated house was the subject of many a ghost story. Some said it was haunted by the Jenkins family, forever reliving their last, tragic Halloween. Lights were seen flickering in the broken windows, and the swing on the decrepit porch moved on still nights, as if rocked by an invisible hand. Pastor Stanley, usually a beacon of calm, seemed uneasy. His sermon the Sunday before Halloween spoke of the thin line between the living and the dead, and the importance of respecting both. His words carried weight, and many a parishioner felt a shiver run down their spine as they walked home under a sky darkening earlier each day. On Halloween night, the town gathered for the annual parade, a tradition that saw even the grumpiest of residents donning costumes and embracing the spirit of the evening. Ghosts and goblins, witches and warlocks, all marched down the main street, their laughter mingling with the eerie soundtrack provided by the high school band. As the parade ended, a group of daring souls, led by the ever-curious high schoolers, decided to visit the Jenkins place. Armed with flashlights and a sense of adventure, they crept through the overgrown garden, pushing open the creaking gate. What they found inside was a mystery, one that they would whisper about in hushed tones for years to come. Some claimed to have seen the ghostly figure of Mrs. Jenkins, others spoke of a cold hand brushing against their own. But all agreed that the old house held secrets best left undisturbed. Back in the safety of their homes, the people of Slippy Creek celebrated Halloween with candied apples and ghost stories told by the fire. The night passed, and with it, the feeling of otherworldliness that had enveloped the town. And so, in Slippy Creek, as the Halloween story was told once again, the old truths settled in anew, wrapped in the cloak of superstition and the unknown, a gentle reminder that in this little town, the line between the real and the imagined was as thin as a spider's web. And that's the news from Slippy Creek, where the men are hardworking, the women are bright, and all the children are, indeed, adventurous.